First start off with an apology. I was going to talk about adult site applications with a drone, but uh, there was new FAA regs last year and it put me just far enough behind that we couldn't get those trials done before the winter. So instead, I'm gonna talk about applying granular larvicides with a UAV. So first, I'll tell you a little bit about our drone. This is the DJI S1000 Plus Octocopter. It's uh, 41 inches in diameter from uh, not including the props, weighs 16 pounds. It can carry up to 24 pounds, hover for about 32 minutes, and has a top speed of around 45 miles an hour. It has um, a folding design, full retractable landing gear and a folding design, which makes it very easy to transport. And it's all controlled with this unit here. Manual flights conducted with the radio, but we focus most of our attention on programming autonomous flights with this tablet. So with the tablet, we can program it to take off, fly a pre-programmed route, uh, turn the sprayer on and off, return to home and land all by itself without any input from the pilot. And the total cost is around $4,000. And this is the granular spreader that we developed. It may look familiar. It's simply a hand spreader that we picked up at the local home improvement store. We took off the hand crank and replaced it with an electric motor. And the flow control valve is operated by a servo. We've got a clear acrylic cover to keep the material in and allow us to see how much is left. And there's a 3D printed dovetail mount on top that allows us to attach and detach the unit very quickly. And the whole thing ties into the flight control system of the drone so that it can be turned on and off automatically and the flow rate can be adjusted to the speed of the aircraft. So the first thing I had to do was figure out what the flow rates were for this device. So I did a bunch of static flow rate tests with three different size granules. We have Vectorback G, which is a 5.8 mesh, uh, Vectorlex FG, which is a 10 to 14 mesh, and Altsid pellets, which are about four millimeter in diameter and three to 12 millimeters long. And I ran both of these, uh, timed the output, ran at three different settings, basically a low, medium, and high, and then calculated the flow rates. And this table just kind of summarizes those results. So we can get anywhere from up to 3.5 pounds per minute for flow <clears throat> with a capacity of up to six pounds with, with Altacid. I should mention the, the granular unit that I just showed you uh, weighs in at about 2.6 pounds and has a capacity of uh, 0.77 gallons. So for, after that, I need to figure, get a rough idea of what the swath was. So I had the drone hover at a couple different altitudes and just went out there, looked and felt to see where the granules were, fall, granules were falling and then staked flags at the end of that swath and measured between the flags to see what the, what the rough swath would be. And here's the results for that. I did it with Vectolex uh, with the fine and uh, standard granules. At 10 feet, the swath was too small at 30 feet. Wind really became a factor blowing granules off target and, and messing with the swath. And so our best results were right around 20 foot altitude. We got an overall swath of 16 feet. Now I tested with uh, Vectolex fine granules, but we ended up doing subsequent tests with Vecto Prime FG because of its very low application rate of 1.25 pounds per acre and a greater capacity in the hopper of up to 3.8 pounds. So with a 16 foot swath, flying at around 7.5 miles an hour with, uh, for that 1.25 uh, pounds per acre, we need a flow rate of 0.3 pounds per minute. Next, we wanted to find out what the true application rate was for this machine in flight. So this is our field setup. We've got a row of 16, 18 gallon totes spaced two feet apart. And then the drone's over here and we programmed it to take off, fly across at about 7.5 miles an hour, make the application. Then we collected the granules from each tote and weighed them to see what the application rate was. And we did that for a, a number of times. Okay, and so this is a video just showing one of the actual applications, a view from above, side view of the same thing. And then you see a drone's eye view of the actual spreader in action. And this graph shows the results of that. So the uh, 
Again, our goal was 1.25 pounds per acre. The red bars are totes where we did not hit that minimum rate. The green bars are totes where we did hit that minimum rate. So overall, we got a total swath of 18 feet, pretty close to what I predicted by simply putting the thing up and feeling where the granules were falling. But our effective swath was around uh, eight feet. So eight feet where we actually hit our target rate. Now, if we're doing an actual field application, we're going to be going out, turning around, coming back in the opposite direction. So if we overlap these tails where we don't quit uh, meet our rate, now all of a sudden we do hit our, our intended rate of 1.25 pounds an acre. And this graph shows what happens if you continue going back and forth over a field that predicts what that pattern would be if we give it a 10 foot spacing between each flight path. So we're pretty much between our minimum of 1.25 pounds an acre and a maximum of 2.5 with a coefficient of variation of 0.39, which isn't too bad for a granular application. Overall average was 1.6 pounds per acre, not too far off from our intended of 1.25. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like, this is one of our totes, a picture of the inside of one of our totes. You probably can't make out the granules, but there they are. 11 grains equals about 1.25 pounds per acre. So that's what we're shooting for. Not a lot of room for error in either direction. And of course I could slow it down a little bit or increase the flow rate a little bit to bring these tails, these minimum rates up. But then of course I'm gonna increase the maximum rates too and the idea here was to get as much area treated in a single load as possible. So it was going for an absolute minimum. So what can this machine actually do now as it's configured? With a 10 foot swath and 7.5 mile per hour speed, we can cover an acre in 6.6 .6 minutes. With a flow rate of 0.3 pounds per minute, we're putting out just under two pounds an acre. With a total capacity of 3.8 pounds of Vector Prime, we can treat about two acres Per load and refilling the hopper takes you know a couple seconds and on a single battery we can probably treat about do run make about three to four runs and replacing that battery just takes a few seconds so about six to eight acres per per battery so does this have any actual practical application to as it stands right now i think it does this is hudson county uh, where i work it's a densely populated urban city and we, ha we have a number of areas in blue there where we use full-scale aircraft to treat some of our well, wetland marshes. But we also have a lot of areas like this. This is a, a capped garbage dump with a drainage ditch around it. These are railroad tracks here. This is the New Jersey Turnpike. Not an area where you would want to fly a full-scale aircraft, too congested, but someplace where a drone would certainly fit in quite nicely. You can handle this with no problem. So what's next for the project? Well, I want to improve the swath, see if we can't make it a little bit wider. Uh, I'm going to try maybe a faster motor or a different impeller design to try and sling those granules out a little farther. I've got about another 1.6 pounds that I can add to the drone in capacity before it's maxed out. And so uh, theoretically, I can get up to 2.7 acres per load with, uh, with the unit that we have now. But ultimately, we want to look at a larger machine with a greater payload capacity so we can carry more material. And just like to thank uh, my team at Hudson Regional for assisting with the uh, field trials and also Banu from Valent for providing the spreadsheet which did all the calculations for the uh, actual application rates. Thank you.